Optics is everything. As an artist, it's taken me a long time to realize this, but literally everything you do in your artistic career is about how people perceive you. And depending on your goals, this might be not important, but this might be extremely important. Because if you have goals to actually do something with your creative work, then how people perceive you is absolutely everything. And I refer back to Billions because this is kind of where this idea sprouted from, where Bobby Axelrod says in one of the first few seasons, everything I do is fucking optics. And it's absolutely true because him as a billionaire, you know, stock trader, all eyes are on him. So he's got to do things like give money to charity or be seen, you know, in a poor neighborhood taking photo with a poor kid so that it looks like he's actually doing good things and then he can gain more capital. It's a really insane thing and that's a perfect example of a large scale version of it. But if we bring it back down to earth and focus on just you as a creative, the theory still applies that optics is everything. Hey guys, Eamon here and this is where I explore my creative philosophy. Now this can be really scary, but you know, if you understand it, then it can actually be really exciting. You see, part of it is, you know, most people won't actually support something until it's actually cool to support that thing. And this is where that kind of hilarious ego thing comes from. It's like, oh yeah, I liked that band before it was cool, man. It's like, everyone was jumping on it and I already liked it like ages ago. And it's kind of like when you like an underground band or, you know, electronic artist or something like that. And all of a sudden an article is written about them and they're on the radio for one song. And then all of a sudden they make an EP and then that EP blows up and cause it's on the radio now everyone's heard it and it's cool to like those people. But even if they were the same songs, which now have some mainstream attention, were just chilling on SoundCloud or chilling on Spotify and they had less than a thousand plays. If most of the people that liked them after that radio was actually listening to that when it was on Spotify and had less than a thousand plays, they'd probably skip through it and skip next and skip through it and skip next. And it's because of their optics, right? Because of how they were perceived by the viewer or the audience member, right? They didn't have the validation of a lot of other people liking that thing so why should I like that thing? And you know, the consumer is not to blame in this situation. We all do this, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, but it's like, why should I have the time to invest into this thing if it's not already a validated idea rather than just actually paying full attention to it in the moment, and then you might actually love it, you know, but that's kind of a different topic. But this kind of alludes to what I'm saying is that optics is absolutely everything. It's the same with YouTube, you know, if a video has 10 views on your homepage and a video has a million views on it right next to it on your homepage, which one are you going to be most likely to click on regardless of the potential, you know? And unfortunately, this is why it kind of comes down to marketing yourself as an artist. And for the longest time, you know, when I was making music or when I was making videos, I was like, look, I don't even care about if other people like it or not. I'm just making it for me. and you know, I just want to have fun and express myself. And this can be a trap. If you're an artist, this is going to limit your potential because you're actually preventing yourself from being hurt. Because, oh no, if you don't put in all of the actual effort, if you don't put in 110% and it fails, it's okay because you didn't put in that effort. But if you do put in 110% and then it fails, then your ego is going to be hurt and it's going to reflect poorly on you and people are going to perceive you in a particular way. You know, we've all had that person kind of offhandedly say, you know, that's never going to work. You know, why are you doing that? Like, that's never going to actually become anything. And this can either beat you down or this can motivate you further to be like, I'll show you. And I've had both situations happen to me. You have to work on the marketing side of things if you ever actually want anything to come of it. And I'm not necessarily saying you have to you know, hone your digital marketing skills. Although, you know, understanding Instagram algorithms and you know how social media works and perhaps even paid advertising is going to help you immensely. But the other thing is, you know, making your art much more palatable to people so that they can actually consume it in a way which is more entertaining and going to get them to perceive you in a different way so that they can take more actions to actually follow your stuff, share your stuff, get more eyes on you. These are the kinds of things that we have to be thinking about as artists, which ultimately shape the kind of optics of, you know, how we look in that limelight. And it's really hard to do these things. I'm definitely not claiming it's easy because it's more skills 
to learn rather than just the thing. And if you're like me and you just got into music production or whatever, just for the fun of it, and then you realize that you actually want something to happen, then you've got to hone all these other skills rather than just this kind of core skill that you were just having fun doing. So you have to make that decision as an artist and the earlier you can make it, the better. So another problem with this is, you know, most people on Instagram and, you know, Facebook, all social media platforms, Spotify, SoundCloud, they fake the numbers. So whether it's fake followers, fake plays, you know, they're just pushing a bunch of paid ads onto it. So it gets that number there. So it actually shapes how you perceive that thing. It might get you to actually click on it, maybe listen to it and maybe share it. You know, the whole of the internet is fake. And if you can realize this, it's actually going to help you on your artist journey because you realize just how much optics kind of play into it. But also you're probably not going to hold everything so tightly when you put something out that you spent a hundred hours on and it doesn't actually, you know, equate to anything and people don't listen to it and, and whatever, you know, because you have to do these extra things like marketing to actually shape the optics of people so that more people will perceive it in a particular way. Hopefully what I'm saying is making sense and I won't go too deep into all of the potential things that you can do to ensure that people perceive you in a particular way. But some of the obvious ones are making everything look as professional as possible. You know, high quality is going to make people perceive you in a particular way and, and, and think that you're actually serious about what you're doing. And this doesn't necessarily have to be like high quality, like A7S3, like insane camera stuff, you know? If you're like a psychedelic rock band, which a few of my friends are in, for example, shout out, then the particular look that they might be going for is a kind of like grungy, colorful, like unique, like psychedelic kind of look. And in that kind of realm, in that niche, that's actually high quality for them. So don't take what I'm saying literally and go out and buy a $20,000 camera because that doesn't mean because that doesn't mean that you'll actually get where you need to go. Now, another thing which is something I'm a huge advocate of is creating content. So if you're an artist, whether you're making music or even drawing, you have to be making a bunch of content around that thing because the more content you make and put out there, not only are you going to be more comfortable in front of a camera and therefore talking to people who might actually book you for kind of paid acts in the future, but also it's going to naturally get more eyes on you more hype around you, more views and more plays on all the stuff that you're doing and therefore improve your overall optics, right? So not only creating content, but creating high quality content, just crushing it out. And I mentioned this in content theory, both on my channel and on the MetaMinds podcast. And we go into much more detail about content theory in those episodes. So I would recommend checking those out if you would like. But I guess the main thing is to realize that optics is everything. And that if you actually want something to become of your art and you want to be, you know, playing shows or you want to be, you know, drawing on a stage, then you have to shape your optics. You have to shape how people perceive you. And that's up to you to think kind of outside the box as to how you can do that. You know, use some of these technological tools that we have like social media and cameras and whatnot to actually shape how people perceive you. Make sure you're getting all of your friends to share your art, to get that organic kind of growth maybe dabble in some paid advertising or pay someone who knows what they're doing, maybe a friend who can help you with paid advertising to get more eyes on your stuff. Maybe even think about going the route of inflating your follower count. Because even though I'm aggressively against, you know, fake followers and being non-genuine, the fact is these kinds of things do actually shape people's perception of you. And it will equate to higher rewards for you much Sooner. So I'm not saying go out and buy a million followers or anything like that. But again, if you can learn marketing, there's a lot of different ways to go about actually, you know, increasing your follower count relatively quickly. And the main thing is to realize that if you want your art to actually be seen by people and you to actually gain some traction and some traditional success as an artist, then you have to play the game. And the game is all about optics and how people perceive you. Hopefully this creative philosophy made some sense to you and provided you with a bunch of value. It's definitely been a huge learning in my creative journey in realizing, you know, how to shape people's perception of me as an artist. And I'm definitely not even great at it. I think I'm still learning a lot on that path, but realizing it is definitely the first major step. So thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like the content, make sure to drop me a comment, send me a DM on Instagram, 
or subscribe, whatever you want. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.